a guy named by Charles Spurgeon, probably one of the greatest and most famous preachers of all time. Sometime I'm sure you would have come across one of the things he've said, but I remembered this quote this morning, and uh, I just loved it. I, I love this kind of stuff. We preach Christ and Him crucified, he says. A sermon without Christ in it is like a loaf of bread without any flour in it. There's no Christ in your sermon, sir, then go home and never preach again until you've found something worth preaching. Yeah, we preach Christ and Him crucified. And you know what? It doesn't matter how many times you've heard it. Uh, I think Martin Luther, uh, also another legend, love him. Uh, he said, we need to hear the gospel every day because we forget the gospel every day. <laughs> we need to hear the gospel every day because we forget the gospel every day. The gospel, oh my goodness, that's the way. It's the way. It's the way. Something we need to constantly hear and fix our minds on. Hear it, hear it again, hear it three times, hear it four times. And every time you hear it, it's something new and fuels your faith again, again. You have to keep hearing. You have to keep hearing. I, uh, uh, that's the only work that we do. Um, I've preached this thing uh, a couple of times. But uh, the book of Hebrews says, labor, work <laughs> to enter the rest. So, um, if you're working in your faith, and it's hard and it's difficult, the only work that you need to do is work to rest. <laughs> Just get yourself again to the position of where you can rest. So, today you, you'll sit here, uh, you, you got up early this morning, well, there are some people in Kimberley now watching the live stream that could have been here, they're still in your pajamas, that could have been here, but the rest of you... Oh, oh, yeah, you got up, you yeah, you labored <laughs> to enter rest. <laughs> okay, um, hopefully that rest is you're not going to sleep during the service. The rest is your heart is, is hearing words of faith. Amen. Amen. So, um, so that's the only work we need to do. I work to rest. Now, what is rest? Rest is, is that position of like you just completely secure in the grace of God. You're completely secure in what, what God has done and what Jesus has done. So, um, yeah, this is what, what, the Lord, what the Lord has got in my heart today. And um, let's go for it. All right, so let's start. Let's just read something that we've read many times. And let's, let's do that. What, what Martin Luther said. Let's hear it again. All right, Isaiah 53. He says, who has believed? Who has believed our report? Wow. That is the King James Version. Who has believed our report? Who has believed our report? It's too good to not believe. Who has believed our report? And he's about to give you his report. Okay, so um, if you do your studies, exams, at the end of, the, of, of your exams, you get a report. Okay? If you go for a, a, a doctor, go to a doctor and they diagnose you, the diagnosis is a report um, based on What's happening in your body or based on what you've done um, is a report. And this, this one says, yeah, who believed our report? Who believed our report? And uh, he goes on to speak, to prophesy. It's so amazing. If you just think about this book, how many books, what, 66 or something like that, books in the Bible written over a span of, what, 4,000 years, 2,000 years, more or less, um, somewhere, a couple of thousand years, and uh, without internet, without Google, without uh, in different places, in different um, countries, and in different times, and all these prophets wrote, and it all pointed to Christ, foretelling things that were going to happen. I mean, this book itself is a miracle. If you're not, if you've never seen a miracle, read read the book. 
read the book. <laughs> it's a miracle. It's a wonder in itself. How they did this. How they did this. Um, and everything pointed to, to one man, to Jesus, who, who fulfilled everything 2,000 years ago. Who has believed our report? And I love when Jesus was crucified, those last words he says, it is finished. Other translation says, it is accomplished. Another one says, it is done. Reinhard Bonker would have said, finished and clear. Who's believed our report? And uh, to whom has the arm of the Lord been disclosed? Uh, verse, let's carry on. In verse, um, verse 4. He has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows and pains. And we considered him stricken. Verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The, ch uh, the chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Now, this has all happened before Christ was actually crucified. The, pro the prophet wrote, and he said, he, we, we were healed, okay? Um, he was wounded for our transgressions. And then he goes on to say, um, by his stripes, we are healed. And Peter takes it a step further, and he says, we were healed. So we were healed. Who has believed the report of the Lord? But go to Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, from verse 6. Now, before we read that, Galatians chapter 3, verse 11 says, The righteous will live by faith. Okay. The righteous will live by faith. It doesn't say that people will live by faith. Um, uh, remember, the righteous, they are a peculiar group of people. The righteous are, are not plain human beings. We're human beings, but like upgraded human beings, okay? Uh, Hebrews, chapter, um, Hebrews chapter 1 speaks about Jesus as being a light being, you know? And if we are made in his image, it means we are a light being. Um, but the righteous will live by faith. And so in order for me to live, okay, in order for me to um, to live in that life, he actually gives me the recipe on how to live like that, okay? So we all know what it's like when, when faith is alive in our spirits, in our hearts. We know what that's like, but we also know what it's like when faith is not alive in our spirits and in our hearts, okay? So it's not a once-off and you, you're living. Come on. It's not a once-off. It's, it's literally something that we have to do. And apply. So the righteous will live by faith, like a fish lives in, in water and lives with the oxygen in the water. The righteous live by faith. There is no life without faith. Okay? The righteous need faith. The righteous, verse 6, the righteous based on faith says, Don't say, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss to bring Christ up? But what does it say? The word is in you, is in, near you, it is on your lips, it's in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Because if we acknowledge and confess with our lips that Jesus is Lord, and in your heart you believe that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart a person believes, and so is justified, and with the mouth he confesses and confirms uh, I love how it says, with the heart you believe. It doesn't say that with the mind you believe. It's not a psychological effort. It's a knowing. It's like you know. It's like when you're in love, you know. With the heart you believe. All right. The scripture says, no man who believes in him will ever be put to shame or be disappointed. Um, I'm just trying to get to this one. Here we go. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How are people to call on him whom they have not believed on? How are they to believe in him if they have not heard? And how are they to hear without 
preaching. And how can man be expected to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring glad tidings. Um, Verse 16, uh, 17. So, faith comes by hearing, and what is heard comes by the preaching of Christ. Now, this is where I want to take a little bit of a turn in my message today. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the Word of God. Sometimes what I have heard, what I've found in my walk with Christ is, is the hearing part, to hear what He's saying. Uh, I think that's the labor part. Labor to, to hear. Once I hear the voice of God, faith comes. You know, if you pick up your Bible, you'll know. You can read, you can read, and sometimes it's just like nothing is hitting home. And then immediately, boom, something hits. You know, you literally have to read until the Lord speaks. Just help you with your homework if you don't know how to like read scriptures. There's many ways of reading the Bible. Sometimes I will, like this, where's my other Bible? There's my net translation. I love this Bible. This is like my storybook, right? I read this book like it's my story, I, my storybook. So I go through page by page and I read it and I study it. Then I've got my other Bible, which is this one. This is, you can see, this one is, it's all okay, and um, this one is like my, my study Bible, so I will read one verse over and over and over again, and then I'll try and link one verse with another verse, with another verse, with another verse, that's how I read, and then I'll meditate, sometimes I just have to read one verse and chew on that thing the whole day, just chew on it, you know, have you ever seen now? A cow or a swallows food and then brings it up again, and chews again, and then swallows it and brings it up again. That's literally what you got to do with the word. Nah, you got to do that. So faith comes by hearing, hearing the word. And so sometimes it requires more attention. Lord, help me hear what you're saying. Help me hear what you're saying. You know, um, who said it this morning? Someone said it. But to hear. To hear his voice, to hear what he's saying. Yeah, probably awkward. Faith comes by hearing. But here's where I want to take just a little bit of caution to the church and to everyone who's watching online. Uh, let's go to Second Timothy quickly, chapter four. Second Second Timothy chapter one. Ach, chapter 4. I already found in this time um, that this one is, is big based on a lot of things that's happening today. Social media, dopamine levels that are going wild all over the place. Um, there's this thing in the church as well where, where we need to watch. And um, Second Timothy chapter 4, let's just read that and hear what Paul says. I charge you in the presence of God. And of Christ Jesus, who is the judge of the living and the dead. Um, verse 2, Herald, Herald, Herald. Wow, very um, interesting word today. Is there any heralds? Yeah, heralds. Preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency, whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable. There's only two seasons where you preach the word. The only two seasons. In season and out of season. <laughs> There's only two seasons when you need to hear the word. In season and out season. In other words, all the time. Okay. Yeah. Pretty much the same amount of time that you need a holiday. Six months, twice a year. All right. Uh, all right, preach the word in season, out season. Yeah, verse 3. A time is coming when people will not t- tolerate sound and wholesome instruction. 
but having ears itching, they will gather to themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number, chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold. Okay, this is great angles. So let's quickly read it in the, King, in the Net translation. But I thought this is so applicable to today. Verse 3, there will be a time when people will not, will not tolerate sound teaching. Instead, they will follow their own desires. They will accumulate teachers for themselves because they have an insatiable curiosity to hear new things. To hear new things. Have you ever been like caught on Facebook and you find yourself losing all your time? By watching one video, click, there goes a video. Then the next one comes on, click, there's that video. And the next one, before you know it, you've seen 20 minutes of your day is gone. Because you've just sat and just, new thing, new thing, new thing, new thing. And dopamine levels, like I said, are going out of the, your brain is, is, is getting addicted to this, these new things. And I found this in, in, in the church, that people seem to slip off the simplicity of the gospel so easy. It's like, it's just, and you're off of the gospel. You're off of the simplicity of what I just read, Isaiah 53, where Jesus did it. And where I can just position myself and, and receive that. You see, if I'm not tuned into that... Um, I've been derailed, and then I love how the, uh, sorry, go back to the, the amplified Ntombi. Listen to that, that loss to support the errors they hold. Teachers, one after another, chosen to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors they hold. To you guys, I really have to tell you, don't let anybody tell you that you can't understand the Bible yourself. Don't let anybody say, tell you that if you pick up that you won't be able to read and interpret. Back to Martin Luther who, who translated um, the, the Bible a uh, couple of centuries ago, however long it was. What a breakthrough that was because people could read for themselves. People could read for themselves. And there's this, this um, very silly self-condemnation thing that, that says, I can't read and understand what's written here. It's, it's, I don't know how that lie, but I think everybody relates to what I'm saying. If you'll pick up the word and you'll just read it, whether it's storybook style or whether it's meditation style, you will get more than just by putting on YouTube and listening to this sermon and the next sermon and the next sermon. Come on, guys. Okay, um, that being said, you don't need to hear the whole thing. You don't need to know it page for page. You just need to know the gospel. <laughs> and you need to hear it again. And you need to hear it again. And a hundred times, tell, you, tell your faith is fueled. Because before you know it, you're off course and you're trying something, trying on something different. Paul writes and he says, there's those that preach another Jesus and another gospel. And today's time, I hear it over and over again. So let's stay on this word of caution quickly. Go to Hebrews 13. Um, Hebrews 13. It's fantastic. The whole book of, of Hebrews is like, if you read it, it's literally like you're in a 13-gear in a car. And it's like Hebrews 1, and you're, uh, Hebrews 2, uh, by the time you get to Hebrews 13, it's, uh, it's just like, it's such an awesome book. Yeah, Hebrews 13 is fantastic. Verse, nine, verse 8, Jesus Christ is always the same, yesterday, today, and forever. That's, that's brilliant, you know. That's why there's a saying that says, Jesus is perfect theology. Theology. Jesus is perfect theology. 
Jesus is perfect theology. If you know Jesus, you know the truth. If you know the person, you know him. Now, now knowing Jesus is like, um, I speak to those like, for example, that are married. Uh, once you marry the right person, uh, some people tend to switch off and say, okay, no, I know you already. But like marriage for years, you're getting to know that person. You never stop getting to know that person. It's like you constantly, yeah. <laughs> it's like I don't know how to, how to put it better, but like Philippians chapter 3 says, Paul, Paul who wrote this Bible that we read to know Jesus, he says, hey, my purpose is to know Jesus. And then he explains it. He says to become progressively more acquainted with his person and the wonders of his person. So to know Jesus is like, it's not to know of him. You know, knowing the word know in the scripture speaks of intimacy. To know him, to know him, to know the truth. So why I said that is, is, is we are still taught. We still learn. We still, um, we still get revelation. We still get new things. But everything, yes, yeah, it's a tip. Everything, anything that is not revealed in the person of Jesus, just put it aside. Anything, any, any sermon that you hear, any new um, revelation that comes off of a pulpit, if it is not revealed and expressed in the person of Christ, it's just a distraction. Just put it aside. You know, um, my old friend said, if it's difficult, you build a cult. With simplicity, you'll build a city. Keep it simple. Less is more. <laughs> you know? So, we, I come from a, a wonderful background in, um, in, I've got a, an amazing church history. You know, I've been all over. Uh, I like to say I was a floating trophy. I've been in all the churches in Kimberley, most of them at least. I've played guitar on most of the stages as a floating trophy. And, um, but anyways, uh, it's a joke. But then we went to, I also went to, um, I was in Bible school, and we got to a place where we saw thousands of people Thousands of people come, and, and we saw incredible miracles. You know, like that song this guy was singing, I've seen cancers disappear, I've seen the dead raised. I'm like, check, I've seen that. Check, I've seen the dead raised. Check, I've seen all of it. I'm so grateful, but I forget. <laughs> I forget. For some reason, we all forget we all forget of those things, so that's maybe why we have to get the culture of testimonies in this place. But what, what I found is, why I refer to that in the time of the miracles, is that our pastor at that time, he got ill and he, he passed away. And then you literally could see how the church would drop off from thousands to lesser, to lesser, to lesser. And people that once were radical about the gospel were now offended. People who once believed, and then you begin to realize how many people actually put their faith in preachers, and how many people actually really know Jesus. How many people actually put their faith in Jesus? How many people build their house on the rock, and how many people build their house on sand? How many people build their house on that which is... Um, Immortal, invisible, invincible, and how many people put their, put their lives and their, on, on Jesus? And that's what it comes down to. That's why I tell you, church, you need to read your own Bible. You need to read your own Bible. You need to do it. You need to go to a church that preaches Jesus. So I'm glad you're here. <laughs> so the next verse, yeah. After he says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday to for, and forever. The next verse he says, so don't be carried about by different and varied alien teachings, strange teachings, strange doctrines, the King James says, strange doctrines. 
It's a good thing. It's good for the heart to be established and strengthened by the means of grace. The Amplified says, God's favor and spiritual blessing. Have you believed the report of the Lord? Uh, he says, every day, Martin Luther said, every day I forget the gospel. So every day I need to hear the gospel. Every day I need to hear Jesus loves me. Every day I need to hear my sins have been forgiven. Every day I need to hear, but by his stripes I am healed. Every day, and I, I know I don't hear that every day. And I know I deal with a lot every day. And that's where I need to labor to enter that rest. Labor to enter that rest. Acts chapter 20, let's go there so long. And I, wanna, I want to read this. Um, this part is, is, is really special to me. Acts 20, verse 32. It says, I commit you to God. I deposit you in His charge. I commend you to the word of His grace. Listen to that. I commend you to the word of His grace, to the commands, to the counsels, and to the promise of His unmerited favor. It is able to build you up and give you your inheritance among God's set-apart ones. The word of grace is able to build you up and give you your inheritance. I commit and I commend you to the word of His grace. Okay, To the word of His grace. It is able to build you up and give you your rightful inheritance among all of God's set-apart ones. Today, if you're saying, oh, these guys that preach grace, is a good sign that you need grace. These people that preach against grace and listen to, yeah, no, you know, but grace, you know, they're taking for No, you need to hear the word of grace today because it means that you're stuck in your own performance, which is you're on the outside of the cup and Jesus says, hey, that doesn't impress or please me at all for what goes on in the heart. We need to be more confident in what Jesus did than in our, in our own best, and our own efforts. Okay? Acts chapter 2. We'll start there and then we'll read through the book of Acts till I find my scripture. Acts 2. It's fine. Acts 2 verse 38. This is good. Repent. Repent. That's, that word is usually a preacher's favorite word. It's not a very COVID-friendly word, that one, because usually the spit flies till the third, fourth. Repent. Repent. Change your views and purpose to accept the will of God. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness and the release from your sins. So Acts, that book of Acts says, hey, the forgiveness and the removal of sins is declared unto you. Today I want to, you know, I was once at a, at a, a, a mass crusade um, where a preacher, um, he just preached, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. All of them just heard that. And something like, uh, he called out, um, anybody who's, who had a deaf ear, ear, and he went to each one and said, your sins are forgiven, and the ear would pop open. Your sins are forgiven, and the ear would pop open. And we saw something like 20, 20 deaf people here just by the declaration of your sins being forgiven. Church, do you know that your sins are forgiven? The one that you did this morning, yesterday, your sins are forgiven. Now, if you got your best church suit on today, you're looking good. Your sins are forgiven. <laughs> it is written, said Jesus. It's written. Now, let be declared unto you that your sins 
are forgiven. Back to back to Hebrews thirteen. Hebrews thirteen. Oh, on your way to Hebrews thirteen, just take a stop at Hebrews two, verse one. Hebrews 2 verse 1, check this out. So it says, this reason, that's because of God's final revelation in His Son, Jesus, and because of Jesus' superiority to the angels, we must pay closer attention than ever to the things that we have heard so that we do not drift away from truth. So that we do not drift away from truth. What do we need to pay attention to? The things that we have heard. The things that we have heard. We need to pay attention to. Um, Galatians 3 verse verse 11 again, it says, Faith comes by hearing. Ah, no, the righteous will live by faith. Romans 10 says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But to pay attention to it, I need to hear it. I need to, how do I hear it? Not always by putting on a YouTube video or reading it in the Bible. By declaring it. By speaking it. Come on. By declaring and by speaking it. Then I, I, I hear it. Faith does not come by having heard. <laughs> Faith does not come by having heard. Ek het hierdie al gehoor. Ja, kind I skrif. No, it comes by hearing it so that we do not drift away from the truth. This one, this one is, is one of my, it's like a foundation scripture to me in my, in my own personal life. And the Lord showed this to me. Um, I don't know if I was watching too much Fast and the Furious or something like that, but the night I was dreaming that I was in a drift car and I was racing. And you know you get drift races? It's different than a normal drag race. A drift race is literally you, you drift that car around like, like that. And, uh, and actually right at the end of the race, I drifted out. When I drifted out. And then the Lord gave uh, that word. Um, came, that scripture came in the dream. It says we need to pay much closer attention to the truth so that we do not drift from the truth. The truth never drifts. We drift. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And maybe you're sitting here and thinking that, oh, Bruce, but this is such a, a foundational, uh, basic message. This is, this is everything. <laughs> this message is everything. It's, it's everything. It's everything. So, Hebrews 13. Oh, thank you, Lord. Verse 17, obey your spiritual leaders. Amen. Gorilla. Yellow with Marx is Xe. Obey your spiritual leaders. Okay. And verse 18, keep praying for us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So, verse 20. You have to read it very slowly. Thank you, Lord. May the God of peace, who brought again from among the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the everlasting agreement. I I love this. Now may the God of peace, sorry, the God of peace, who brought again from among the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood that sealed, ratified the everlasting agreement, strengthen, make you ought to be, equip you with everything good that you may carry out his will. Okay, I want you to see that. I, I, I need you to see that. The, the previous verse again, let's read it again. 
May the God of peace who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the, sea, uh, of the sheep, through what? Through the blood that sealed and ratified the eternal covenant. Okay, Through the blood, equip you with every good thing to carry out his will and strengthen you, making you complete and perfect as you ought to be, accomplishing in us that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. You know what I realize? Jesus does everything. Jesus does everything. It's not a DIY. There's nothing there that says you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Your only job is to, is to hear the message. Is to labor to enter the rest. Some of you came here every Sunday, we know. Come here full of cares, full of anxieties. And you sit here and you hear... I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be fine. Because the blood of Jesus, God through the blood of Jesus and his everlasting agreement, he works in you. He equips, equips you with everything good thing to work, to will, to strengthen, making you complete, perfect as you ought to be, accomplishing, working, he's doing it, that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom, whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, that's it. You know, if I can channel myself to that, okay, it's something so awesome this week. You know what's the greatest piece of technology today? All in the, in the earth. I'll tell you what's the greatest piece of technology. No, your body. <laughs> These. These. Your body. You know why? can house God. It's the only piece of technology that houses God. It's the only piece of technology that houses God. Amen? I just thought, yeah, that's, that's incredible. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, Lord. Mm, thank you, Jesus.